ABC is one of my favorite decks of all time, and it's been pretty much forgotten about in today's format, and I feel like the reason for this is because people are still stuck on some of the old builds of the deck. But in today's video, I'm going to be bringing you guys a competitive build of ABC that can keep up with today's format. We're cutting out a lot of the fluff and we're playing a lot of the core stuff plus things to beat today's metagame. So with that being said, I want to show you guys what my Revolution ABC looks like for today's format and I don't want to keep you guys waiting for too long. So with that, let's get right into today's video. So to get things started off with the main deck, we are playing 2A Assault Core, 3B Buster Drake, as well as 2C Crush Wyvern. Now these are more or less the standard ratios for ABC nowadays, but I kind of want to explain it to you just in case you are newer to the deck. The reason you're only playing 2A and 2C is because essentially these names are kind of bricks in your hand. They don't really do anything for you in hand. B is the most important one, of course, because it's going to be able to search all your cards. But these two, once you get one in rotation, that's all you're going to need. And their cards are always are going to be able to recycle themselves, of course, with your A Assault Core over here you can be able to search with your b special summon with your c and they're going to keep getting themselves in rotation so these are the best ratios you don't really want to hard draw all of them that's why you're only playing these ones and then we're playing two of the union driver as well now i know a lot of people like to play one union driver i personally like playing two because if you draw the one you're in a very sticky situation so i personally like playing the two i know it kind of sucks i wish i could just be playing one but it is a garnet for the deck so you have to be playing two and then for the last abc card we're playing is the three union hanger now we're not playing unauthorized reactivation and i want to talk about that right now because i think it's important to talk about unauthorized reactivation is a really really powerful card especially when you draw a card like union driver because it's like okay i draw a union driver and it's like i can activate the unauthorized reactivation let's say i summon an a activate that you equip union driver it's cool like don't get me wrong but it's just another thing where it's kind of like okay that card is taking up space in the main deck that doesn't actually advance your game state it only helps you in specific two card situations where you draw a driver and you draw a piece and nothing else and i feel like in those situations you're going to be losing or not in a good position anyway so what i wanted to do with this deck is keep it as tight and as consistent as possible because i wanted to keep up with the meta which means you need to fit a lot of anti-meta stuff right so we're not playing unauthorized reactivation playing the union drivers that's all you're going to need with the union hangers over here because this is the consistency enough now if you are playing unauthorized reactivation definitely you can cut union driver down to one because at that point even if you do draw the one you have that unauthorized however even in that case let's say i draw the one and i don't have unauthorized then you're still stuck right and that's why i don't like playing that card while it's a really powerful card i personally don't like playing it i think this is just the most competitive and the most tight version of the deck if that's the right word to use i guess here but you really don't want to play unnecessary cards right but i also want to add that we're playing two theon king regulus two disc coliseum and the one terraforming regulus is essentially one of the best extenders in abc being able to get back one of your pieces any one of your pieces but of course something like b from your graveyard then you can activate the b effect summon itself to the side of the field and then you're going to be able to use the b effect again once it's sent to the graveyard it's really really powerful in that sense so the regulus with this coliseum of course you really need your field spells in your deck and field spells are very important with this deck so that's why we're playing the disc coliseum and the union hangers over here i think these are the perfect ratios and then lastly for the last engine we're playing is a revolution engine of course because this is a revolution abc so two revolution synchron and three tuning you guys can also play the other way around where you play three revolution synchron and two tuning i personally just like it this way it doesn't really make that much of a difference sometimes drawing the name can be pretty cool but rev synchron is going to open you to so many combos with your ancient fairy dragon making baron potentially making crystal wing it's very powerful in that sense as well and the really cool thing about this is if you're able to open this with any one of your field spells of course we're playing six field spells here right if you're including terraforming you're pretty much going to be able to set up a board of abc ip plus a crystal wing at a minimum and if that's your minimum end board you're ending on one disruption with this one disruption with your crystal wing abc is going to be a third disruption and then ip potentially is going to be a fourth disruption just at a minimum and this is all the consistency you're going to need to get to those boards very very often but speaking of consistency we are playing three pot of prosperity if you guys think these field spell ratios and stuff are not enough pot of prosperity is going to do that for you if you need to see a card let's say you see rev synchron but you don't see a name pros to get you to a name let's say you see a name don't see a rev synchron props to get you to a rev synchron or a tuning or a field spell and that's again what i really wanted to focus on here the consistency of the deck hanger disc coliseum with a rev synchron with a prosperity like you're always going to be able to see something let's say you see rev synchron but no hanger prosperity can get you into hanger potentially of course you're digging six cards deeper into your deck so it's a lot more consistency with a three part of prosperity and you should never in theory really brick with this deck so now that i showed you all the different engines the deck is playing i want to show you guys the cards that are going to be able to help you be competitive and combat against today's meta and this is really important to be playing right now so imperm valor all these hand traps are very very important bell over here as well these are the best hand traps of the format we're also playing two ash 
two cross out and a called by the grave so i'm going to explain this real quick i just wanted to show you guys everything that we're playing and the reason we're playing these ones specifically is these nine hand traps right here are the best nine hand traps of the format i think they're so good into so many different decks ghost spells of course is really good offensively when you're hitting cards like flamberge in the today's format but it's also really good defensively because if your opponent is trying to use a bistule on one of your cards trying to use a dd crow on one of your cards called by the grave etc etc ghost spell is a very protective card as well now cross out designator is very important because this deck is is pretty fragile i would say because there's not that many extenders really outside of your regulus now of course rev synchron is technically an extender but you'd prefer but at the points you're using rev synchron you're not really susceptible to the hand traps anyway to be honest with you so that's why i like playing the cross out designator because it's like okay once we get to a platinum gadget right or let's say once we get to ancient fairy dragon that's kind of the choke points of the deck and those cards lose pretty heavily to valor and imperm even ash as well right let's say you draw union hanger and nothing else you need your union hanger to resolve to get to a piece and so that's why cross out designator for like ash something like valor imperm is very very important in today's format now why are we only on two ash that's because fire is very very prevalent and you don't really want to give your opponent a free fire monster in your graveyard for them to use for hita so they can then make promethean princess and so for that reason i think ash blossom is still a really powerful card but i'm just playing two because it's mostly a cross out target now technically this deck does lose pretty heavy to droll and lockbird as well so you can play one ash one droll however i noticed that a lot of people are putting droll in their side decks so that's kind of what i did as well i put droll in my side deck and if i'm worried about my opponent's side in droll then i have the cross out in the games two and games three so that i can cross out my opponent's droll and lockbird as well so i can side those in but i'm not playing them in the main deck now you guys might also be wondering where's the adventure package everyone always plays abc with the adventure package i am not playing that package and the reason for that is because it's just not good into today's format don't get me wrong the adventure package is a very very powerful engine but the problem is with today's format specifically you need to be playing these hand traps or else you're going to lose a lot of your games these hand traps are so important to be playing you can't always rely on going Going first and the really cool thing about this deck is that the adventure package you are giving up potentially one disruption with the adventure package however what you're not giving up is the ability to stop your opponent from playing again if you are forced to go second with this deck this is where all the hand traps shine right and if even if you were going first right yes you might set up a board with one less disruption but setting a board with one less disruption and hand traps it's going to essentially even out right at the end of the day right so that's why i like this hand trap ratios i'm not playing the adventure engine and we're keeping it at 40 on the dot now for the extra deck over here it's pretty standard like there's nothing really to explain in the extra deck really you're playing two abc dragon buster of course your boss monster for the deck one ancient fairy one crystal wing and one baron these are just cards you're going to be making with your rev synchron so you really want to just be playing these three one platinum gadget this is a card that helps you extend if you are uh, not playing with the most optimal hand this card helps you get there right so platinum gadget is really good ip mascarina of course is good sp little knight is really powerful now this deck is actually quite affordable i would say so if you guys don't have access to an sp little knight it's not the end of the world you guys can just play another link monster instead again this extra deck is all just toolbox it's a lot of toolbox the main cards you'd be playing i think is like these one two three four five six seven cards over here like that's really it like these seven that's honestly what's the most mandatory right everything else is kind of toolbox so if you don't have access to sp don't worry you can still play unicorn is another option for you that i still like going into unicorn because unicorn into access code is very powerful one appaloosa of course one underworld goddess one sargus as well as one merrymaker this is really good because if you don't have access to this call see him and you want to get to theory on regulus this is going to help you get into regulus which is really nice and then lastly i'm playing one dweller dweller is just really good into today's format but this could be any other rank four it could be baguska it could be so many different cards right even another link monster if you guys wanted it to be but dweller i think is just really powerful into today's format and it's a card that you can always end on and feel comfortable ending on right so this extra deck nothing too special nothing too spicy just an extra deck that can fit in a lot of toolbox cards that can combat against anything in today's meta but again, just use this as a skeleton and change it up as you see fit. We're playing 3 Nibiru really good into today's format, specifically into Fire. It's really powerful, but it's also really just good into a lot of decks that are rogue that play into this a lot. And so Nibiru is really good in that sense. 3 Drill and Lockbird, like I was talking about earlier. Drill and Lockbird is a card that this deck loses to, so you want to be playing it for the crossout target. But it's also really good into today's format. You might run into Manadium and stuff, and Drill and Lockbird is really good there too, right? So 3 Drill and Lockbird. We're playing the 1 Ash in the last crossout. Again, this is for when you are going first in games 2 and games 3 when you know your opponent is going to be siding in hand traps against you the third cross out with the drolls in the main deck is really powerful as well because now you're going to be stopping your opponent from using drone lockbird against you and again all the other hand traps that you might lose to as well designator is just going to protect you from that right so that's why we're playing these cards over here we're also playing the one harpies as well as three cosmic cyclone just really good into today's format as well it's really good into the labyrinth matchup but it's also really good into the snake eye matchup as well so back row hate of course and then lastly when you are siding in to go first in games two or three as well judgment is really really powerful 
possible because you can just end on this on top of your full board and if you're able to do that you're essentially just winning the game because it guarantees that your opponent can now not break your board right so again this is just a skeleton for you guys to use you don't have to build it the exact same way that i did however i really really like this side deck and i just think it makes sense into everything in today's format so that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my take on Revolution ABC for the March 2024 format. I feel like this build is very competitive and I hope I explained my card choices really well in today's video. And I hope you guys understand why I'm not playing packages like the Adventure Package or cards like Unauthorized Reactivation. While they're very powerful, they just don't do enough in today's format. Now, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We upload seven days a week here on the channel, five shorts, as well as two videos just like this one. You guys are gonna get the deck profiles, combo videos, you guys are gonna get product openings vlogs all of that good stuff it's gonna be right here on the channel so make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned into all of that i appreciate every single one of you guys and if you have any suggestions let me know in the comment section down below that's how we get better together as a community so thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every one of you and with that Zanko signing out peace